Hi, I'm Daniel Foley from the Abundant Life Training Center, and welcome to this week's yearly cycle updates. So let's do a quick update on what we've got coming up over the next week here. We are in February of 2021, and coming up on the 25th and 26th day of February, we have the Feast of Purim. Purim com comes from the book of Esther, and it is a reminder. It was the day the tables were turned for God's people. They were about to be destroyed, but God delivered them and put them back in control, gave them mastery over their enemies. And the Feast of Purim is a reminder of how quickly God can turn the tables and take us from fasting to feasting. And to do this, the way that they typically remember this is that this year it will be on the 26th day of February during the daylight hours they fast. It's considered a minor fast. They fast during the daylight hours, and then they feast in the evening. So basically, it would be like skipping breakfast and lunch on the 26th of February this year, and then feasting at dinner as a remembrance of how quickly God can turn the tables. He can do it suddenly and take us from fasting to feasting. Now, this last week, we had Ash Wednesday which started the 40 days of Lent that lead up to Passover. Ash Wednesday, think of it as ashes in the Bible, were symbolic of people humbling themselves before God. And during the feast or during the time of Lent, people will typically abstain from things. They might abstain from meat or alcohol or um, you know, other things that they feel being led to abstain from. Well, in Exodus 31, it's interesting. It says that God rested on the seventh day. And in some of the versions, it says he abstained from working on the seventh day. During these 40 days of Lent, I think it's a time, it's a time of remembrance for us to remember and to walk it out that the most important thing for us to be abstaining from is resting from our own works and allowing God to do his work through us. But that requires confidence in God today. If I'm going to rest from my work and allow God to do his work through me, that means I got to rest. It means it takes trust. It takes confidence that God can flow through me and that him working through me is more than enough, that his grace is more than enough for what I need to handle today in this very day today. So what is confidence? I like to think of confidence as confidence is the highest expression of trust. Confidence is the highest expression of trust. And that's what we need today, this highest expression of confidence in God. Notice this is not confidence in ourselves. This is confidence in what God can do through us in our lives. It's the highest expression of trust is this feeling of confidence in God. Now, this highest expression of trust. It's the state where all doubt has been removed. And we move from believing in God to trusting and knowing and confidence in God. Now, what are we trusting in? Through faith in Jesus, God has given us access into his grace. And inside of that grace, he has given us everything that we need. He's given us more than enough. He's given us this access into, I call it a pipeline of living water. He's given us everything that he has, his wisdom, his understanding, his knowledge, his peace, his joy, his love, his energy, his health, his righteousness, his kingdom, his time, his money, his love, you name it. He's given us access into everything that he has and is learning to put our faith and then moving on to the point where we are confident and trusting in that supply, trusting in that unlimited, that inexhaustible supply of everything that God has. And where did he put it? He put it on the inside of us and learning to let that flow through us in our lives. That's the place we want to get to. Now, business mentor Dan Sullivan has this uh, formula for confidence that he calls the four C's of confidence. And his four C's are first commitment and then courage, having a burst of courage to get started. And then as we do that, we develop capability. And then finally, capability, increased capability leads to increased confidence. Now, before we get to those four C's, I believe there's a fifth one that we need to do first, which is to deal with condemnation. First John 
I think it's 321 says that if our hearts don't condemn us, then we'll have confidence before God. So first we got to deal with this issue of condemnation. For those that are in Christ Jesus, there is now therefore no condemnation. If we believe in Jesus, it's not about our works anymore. It's about learning to tap into God's grace, this unlimited supply that he has for us of his grace and his goodness. We often think that God's mad at us, that he doesn't want to talk to us, that he's giving us the silent treatment, but nothing could be further from the truth. If we believe in Jesus, God is continually focused on doing good for us every single day. He cherishes us as the apple of his eye. And we can put our confidence in that first. And then we got to learn to put our trust and put our hope and put our confidence in his ability to flow through us in our everyday lives today. And what he can do through us today, this very day. We often put it out into the future, but what he can do through us today in this given day. So first, I think we deal with this condemnation first. God wants to help you. He's here with you today. He's not mad at you. He wants to help you right now in this very present moment. And then we got to make the commitment to learn to tap into this unlimited supply that he has for us, to tap into that grace and to learn to let it flow through us in our lives. And I believe the keys to that are putting our faith in it and learning to trust in it as we go about our day and put our confidence in it as we go throughout the day. And then we got to take, when we start to put our faith, we start to put our trust in that, it gives us the courage to take some steps of faith, the courage to trust and have confidence in our everyday life. And as we do that, what happens? When we put our faith and our trust and we actually walk it out, we tap into God's capability not our capabilities, we tap into God's capability, which is way more than enough. It's unlimited. It's inexhaustible. He can do way more than we ever ask, think, dream, or imagine. We tap into that, and we begin to see that flow in our lives. And what happens is it builds this positive cycle, that the more we put our faith and our trust and our confidence in what God can do through us, and we see him come through, it builds our confidence even more. And then we put our faith and our trust and our confidence in an even higher level. And he comes through again and again and again. And it builds this positive cycle where our confidence just begins to grow and grow and grow and grow. So let's talk about how do we actually apply this today? How can you start walking in this this very day? So in the month of February here, we've been doing a 30-day prayer challenge. And the challenge is simple. We've got a two-minute prayer that we're praying every single day. And this is a prayer that took me about eight to 10 years of just seeking God and constantly kind of refining and tweaking and developing this prayer. This is the prayer that I pray over myself and my family every day. Now, it doesn't mean that there's not other prayers that you can pray, but this is kind of the base prayer that we pray every single day, and it helps us today. We see this prayer being answered continually every single day. And so we pray this prayer. And then we go through a process of, right on the back side of it, we take the time to get still, we listen, because we're asking for God's help today. We take a couple minutes, it doesn't take long, we take about five minutes to go through the whole process. Get still, get quiet, and you're going to develop a plan for today with God. And then it's about just walking out that plan with confidence and trust in that unlimited, that inexhaustible supply, that he's there to help you in everything that you do today. So let's go through it. We're going to go through the prayer, and I'm going to take you through that process of asking those questions, planning your day, and then we'll go from there. So here's the prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray for myself, for my family, for all those connected to me, for anyone who's watching this video, for our church and governmental leaders. Thank you for releasing us from the darkness, for transferring us into the light, into the kingdom of your dear Son. Thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. And I ask that you, the Father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so we would know you better. That the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us and the riches of your glorious inheritance that is in us and the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe the same power that you exercised in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand in heavenly places. 
far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And Heavenly Father, bless us and make your face shine upon us. Let us find grace and favor in your eyes. Expand our borders and our territory. Expand our capacity to receive your purpose and grace and all that you want to do in our lives. And to let it flow through us so that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. And keep your hand on us and help us do today, this day, what is right and best in your eyes. And to do it with peace and joy. And here it is, confidence in you. And as we do, stretch out your hand to heal and do signs and wonders and give us supernatural results in everything we do. And keep us from evil and pain through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So we just prayed that prayer. We just asked God to help us today to do what is right, to do what is best in his eyes, and to do it with peace, with joy, with confidence in him today. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take just a couple minutes, and I'm going to go through these questions. And you can pause the video and go through this, and you will have a plan for the day within the next five minutes of how to start walking this out today with confidence in God. Number one, what do you know you need to do in the next 24 hours? And you can pause the video. What do you know you need to do in the next 24 hours. So like I know, for example, the next 24 hours, I've got a couple of appointments. I got a few things I got to do around the house. I got a few things to do. Whatever you know to do, write it down. We'll start. What do you know to do? Write that down. Next question. What's on your conscience? Is there anything on your conscience that you know you should be doing or stop doing, but you've been procrastinating on it? Oh, I know. I need to pay that bill. Oh, I know I need to forgive that person. Oh, I know I need to start eating better. I know I need to start exercising. I know I need to start spending more time and being more present with my family. I know I need to renew that certification. I know God's been telling me to start writing this book, to open this business, to do this step, to take this step. What's the thing you know to do, but you haven't done yet? Our conscience is often one of the ways that God is speaking to us. So what do you know to do first? And then is there anything on your conscience that you've been procrastinating on? We're going to start there because that's how we get started with God. Do what we know to do. Do what's on your conscience. Be the first two questions. And then we want to, once we do that, that's going to clear out our minds a little bit. And we're going to hopefully have an increased level of clarity where we can hear from God on the next two questions. Next question. God, what's the most important thing you were trying to tell me or show me that you want me to get over this last day, over the last 24 hours? What is the most important thing you're trying to get across to me? And you can pause the video and just listen. Whatever comes to mind first, that's probably it. That's probably it. We make it overly complicated sometimes. And then the fourth question, God, is there anything you want me doing over the next 24 hours other than what I have on my list, what is supposed to be my highest priority for this day? What is the one thing you want me to get done over this next day? And whatever comes to mind first, if anything comes up, write it down. So now, if you've taken these steps, you've written it down. You have a plan for the next 24 hours. And now here's the key, a burst of courage. We're going to, number one, make the commitment to get started on this. Make a commitment to walk this plan out that you just made. And then it's going to take a burst of courage to get started. Whatever the first thing on the list is, just go, go get it done. Get started. And then we're going to work trusting that God is working with me, with confidence in him. I want to work with his peace, his joy, his energy, his power, and confidence in all of that that he's with me. He wants to help me. I just made a plan with God for the day. I'm trusting. I'm putting my confidence and my hope that he is going to help me walk this thing out. 
get started and trust and put our confidence in him that as you go about your day, he's going to be there helping you and equipping you. And he's got more than enough, more than enough power, more wisdom, more time, more whatever it is that you need to walk out this plan for the day. And what's going to happen? God's going to show up. And he's going to help you do exceedingly, abundantly more than you thought you could do. Get out of this day, this next day. And then what are we going to do? We're going to rinse and repeat. You can come back to the video again. Watch the video again. Rinse and repeat. Do it again the next day. And your confidence in God is going to grow even higher. And then do it again the next day. And it's going to grow even higher and higher and higher. And you'll be amazed at what a day can look like. This day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. But I hope this has been helpful for you. If you want more training on this 30-day prayer challenge, or you want to learn more about the yearly cycle, what we do with that, you can go to the AbundantLifeTrainingCenter.com.